When it comes to picking a laptop for photo and video editing, you wanna make sure you have the best specs for the jobs to be done. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how much RAM you need for each of those tasks. What's going on my video editing and photo editing friends? My name is Benji Kaiser and if you're new to the channel, this is where you can find the best tech and tools for your creative industry. And today we're talking about RAM, random access memory. How much do you need in your laptop or desktop computer to do photo or video editing? All right, now as we're going through this video, if you're curious about upgrading your RAM and what the best choices are, you can head down into the description below and grab an affiliate link. I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you for those recommendations. What is RAM and what are we accounting for when we're using RAM inside of our computer? Well, the way RAM works is every time you open a program, whether that be Photoshop, Premiere Pro, InDesign, Illustrator, Affinity, Sketch, even Google Chrome, you're going to be pulling RAM, random access memory, to run that program. And the more programs you have open, the more RAM you're going to use. On average, you're going to see Photoshop or Affinity use about, mm, half gig to one to two gigs just to start up and start running. To have Google Chrome open with maybe five, six, seven, eight tabs is gonna run about two gigs of RAM memory as well. So right there you can see you've already used up your eight gigs of RAM memory. Not only that, but your computer will also use RAM memory to run a lot of background tasks. So it adds up very quickly and I don't recommend 16 gigs of RAM flippantly. I don't recommend 16 gigs of RAM to most designers and editors in my computer recommendation videos just to get you to spend more money. I want you to get a high quality product that performs well and does not lag and kill your workflow. All right, so that's a big basic overview. Now let's dive in to my computer right now and let's take a look at how much random access memory I'm using inside my computer. Okay, so as we have programs running, you can see Premiere Pro alone is using about four gigs of RAM I have a program open, it has a video file, it's about a six and a half minute video file with a lot of footage on it. So that's the specs there. I'm using Affinity, which is a competitor of Photoshop, and it's using about a half a gig of RAM. And then my Google Chrome is using about a gig and a half. So right there alone, I'm using about six gigs just on idle. Now, also to keep in note, I'm gonna look at the performance. My background tasks and everything that's going on in my computer is using about 15 gigs of RAM. Now, there are ways for you to kill some of your background tasks and get that usage down, but a lot of people aren't gonna go and do that every single time they open up their computer. So you gotta keep in mind that this does happen, this background task that uses RAM memory. All right, now as you see, as I start to do some painting on here, just start to edit some different things within Affinity. I'm gonna add a photo, put a layer mask on the photo. You see that the RAM memory starts to get used up more and more. Now, this might not be a big deal if you only have Photoshop or Affinity open, but what if you're listening to music in Spotify? What if you're browsing on your Google Chrome? These are all things that you have to consider when using Photoshop. If you're doing a lot of heavy touch up, doing a lot of layers, you're gonna to start to use up a lot more RAM memory. So it's important to make these considerations that you're not only using Photoshop or Affinity, you may be using other programs. Now, if you do decide to go with the eight gigs of RAM, I recommend closing down your other programs in order to get the maximum amount of power out of your laptop or computer. All right, but let's jump into uh, Premiere Pro here and watch what happens when I start adding different files, moving things around and working inside of the program. So I'm gonna move some of these files around. I'm even gonna add some graphics here. Add a couple different slide ins and you see I'm starting to use a little bit more memory as I'm editing. I'm gonna hit play. We're gonna watch this and scrub through. So now as I'm doing playback on Premiere Pro, you can see that that climbs up. We're now up to almost six gigs of RAM. All right, we're gonna now render out this file and see what happens there. So I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna hit render and look at that. Watch this climb. So we're climbing up to eight gigs of RAM, steadily making our way towards 10 in a hurry. 
So as you see, I am easily cooking my 16 gigs of RAM between the three programs I have open and rendering out in Premiere Pro. All right, now let's go to the performance tab to see what our entire computer usage is right now. So 16 gigs is usually what I recommend as a minimum, but often if you can budget it, the 32 gigs of RAM is the best because you're gonna have a lot of buffer room for the background tasks that are taking place. All right, I'm gonna cancel this out. Don't wanna to take too much time watching that, but that gives you the idea of how much RAM memory it actually takes to run a lot of these high level creative tasks. And by high level, I mean a lot of performance is used within your computer. So my recommendation for photo editors is at least eight gigs of RAM. Now, if you have an eight gigs of RAM computer, what you wanna do is you wanna shut down all your programs and run Photoshop or Affinity at one time. The reason being is that'll give you the most RAM towards that program and allow it to run the smoothest. If you wanna have multiple programs that open at the same time, I recommend 16 gigs of RAM for my photo editing friends. Video editors, as you see, uses a lot of RAM memory. So I recommend 16 gigs of RAM as a base, 32 gigs of RAM if your budget allows. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can check out different RAM memory that I recommend for the performance and budget that you need. You can check that out in the description below. Those are affiliate links, so I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. I thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you got some value, and make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of the videos here on this channel for tech and tools in the creative industry. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com, and I'll see you on the next episode.